G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. Today we're looking at a Mitsubishi Pajero 2010 model NT uh, with a 3.2 litre diesel engine in it, which is a 4M41, I believe. What we're gonna do today is an intake clean, get rid of all that carbon buildup. Why is it that we have such issues with common rail diesel engines as well as some gasoline direct injection engines with regard to carbon buildup? Just think of an athlete trying in the Olympics. Now they train for ages and ages to build up their lung capacity, etc. Just imagine if they were starting to struggle, how long would they actually last? <clears throat> and when they run for long distances, they have to breathe in and they have to breathe out. <clears throat> that wasn't me. So correct airflow is crucial for them to be able to run a marathon. It's no different for an engine. We have to have good clean air coming in and then be able to exit that air after the combustion process has taken place. So let's see how much carbon buildup there is in this NT Pajero. Now this is a new customer, so I haven't been servicing it regularly. Therefore, I don't know what the service intervals are like. I don't know what the oil is that they've used. I don't know if proper maintenance has taken place. Anyway, let's check under the bonnet and see what's happening. I've taken off the engine cover so we can have a good look at it. And uh, we're gonna take the intake manifold off. Um, now this intake manifold is sort of in different sections. Um, we've got the EGR valve sitting up the top here. There's a top section there. Then that goes into the inlet manifold going further down. Now, I'm not going to show you all the details because it's going to take me too long. I'm more interested in showing you the cleaning process that I'll be doing rather than just the removal and replacement of the inlet manifold. Okay, I've got the top section of the inlet manifold off here. You can see throttle body in through there. I've got my EGR valve system off as well. And if we cruise down through here, it gives us a little bit of insight as to what it looks like inside. Hang on, I'll grab a light. There you go. Hopefully that gives you a little more of a clue of how bad it is. That's not the bad section. The bad section's coming through here, of course. So this is the upper section that bolts onto the lower section of the inlet manifold, and you can see how bad it is, hey? Just gives an indication of what the bottom half will be, and it's certainly gonna take some scrubbing to clean that bad boy up, hey? I'm just about to start cleaning it up. Of course, I'll be using an ultrasonic cleaner, but it's a good idea just to try and get rid of some of the muck that's on the surface. I've simply scraped my screwdriver over the top. You can see how much is coming off. This is gonna obstruct all the air coming into the system and you can see how wet it is. Of course, carbon also is very abrasive, so it's not good going into the cylinder either. It can cause damage to the cylinder walls as well as uh, can cause pre-ignition in uh, certain vehicles where this carbon actually lights up before the fuel starts to burn. I've managed to clean the inlet manifold just by scraping it. It's actually really wet in there. Can you see that? There's all sorts of gooblies in there and I've just collected all the carbon which will be disposed of later. But man, it's so wet in there, I can't believe it. I haven't seen it that wet before. Usually carbon is very, very brittle and very, very coarse. In this case, it's all soft and gooey. Uh, either way, it's gonna obstruct the air coming into the intake system. The next step is to get rid of our injector pipes. They need to be pulled out of the road so that we can access the rest of our inlet manifold down here. There'll be a series of bolts along the top one, two, three, four, I believe, and then there'll be another four underneath, which might be a little bit difficult to access. I might even remove this battery here. It's got two batteries in this case. Might remove this one here, simply to be able to get to those bolts underneath the inlet manifold, because otherwise, eh, it's gonna be pretty tough to get to. All the injector pipes are now off. As you can see, I've put them in a tray there. Keep them nice and clean. Another thing to note is uh, on the fuel rail, I'm gonna pull that off shortly. Make sure that everything is capped, that you can possibly cap. So I'm gonna sh shove some uh, rags, etc., down uh, against the injectors there to make sure that they're nice and clean. No dust will enter, etc. I've also got my return line off my fuel rail that I'll have to address and make sure that that is nice and clean as well. So uh, a few more bits and pieces, rail comes off next, then the inlet manifold. So the inlet manifold is just about to come off. There's heaps and heaps of bolts to do. As I said, there was four at the uh, top, one, two, three, four, but there's one on the other side of the intake system there. 
real pain to get to and the same underneath there's four there and there's one right up the back now i found it quicker and easier to go underneath the vehicle to get that last bolt back there i'm not sure if it would have been easier to get underneath here and get those other bolts um, you know there's ones along here the bottom of the inlet manifold but this guy over here definitely i'll try and focus for you we'll get in there a little bit closer so that you can see that fella next to the hose was a pain in the bot bot so yeah a lot easier to do it from the underneath now i can pull the inlet manifold off at this point i briefly want to discuss with you guys why i do this intake clean i pull the whole thing apart and clean it up firstly you have to realize how abrasive carbon is now if we just use a spray don't get me wrong i agree with spray being used as a preventive maintenance measure but as a repair not so much think about it where is this carbon being stored or kept it's in the intake system isn't it now have a think about the path that it's taking it comes from the intake side of things through the intake valve into the cylinder gets drawn down into the cylinder scrapes up and down the bore with the uh, rings etc then it goes out the exhaust now that's bad enough you know could do some damage in the cylinder could create poor valve sealing but on the way out if you've got a dpf the dpf is designed to get rid of soot not carbon okay and all that builds up and blocks up the dpf a lot to think about isn't it so doing this method removing the intake system and cleaning it properly is the best method as a repair then you can carry on with the maintenance program afterwards by using those sprays you've got to ask yourself where does all this carbon come from combustion takes place within the engine cylinder the piston gets drawn down by the crankshaft drawing in air and the fuel mixture in the case of these later model vehicles including common rail diesel and gasoline direct injection air is drawn into the cylinder not fuel the fuel is added later therefore all the valves etc don't get fuel going past them to clean them carbon builds up as a result of the piston coming down and the ring itself on the piston has a gap on it doesn't it so therefore some blow by or compression must go past that ring into the crankcase it then goes around into a positive crankcase ventilation system which then feeds back into the intake system hmm that's where it's all coming from what can we do to prevent some of this carbon build up to start with so why do we have such problems with carbon build up here in australia well our fuel quality is not great that's for sure we are lower on the euro standard compared to the world engine design comes into it and driving style comes into it is there anything that we can do to try and alleviate some of this carbon buildup yes there is regular service intervals are absolutely crucial following the manufacturer's guidelines so that we cover all the bases making sure that we use good quality fuel the best that we can find here in australia using correct oil using low soot low ash type of oil is the best for these configurations of engines for a diesel perhaps consider adding a catch can now this has a filter inside and as that combustion gases go through back to the intake system there is a filter there to try and alleviate some of this carbon buildup. that must be drained every service so yes while this is a big job to try and pull off the inlet system and clean it up manually it should be done before you even consider using any sort of aerosol or pressurized chemical to go through it that's great as a preventive measure as i mentioned but not as a repair one inlet manifold has been removed a bit of a wiggle jiggle situation let's have a look in there you can see that there's a lot of carbon in there um, it's going to take a bit of cleaning scratching and whatever to try and get rid of that mess okay i was kind of concerned about the swirl flaps because there's a lot of carbon down there as you can see uh, but they seem to be operational they're not seized or anything like that um, yeah they're all there nothing's dropped off but yeah they're pretty gunky huh so uh, i'm sorry i can't get the light on there very well it's a bit hard to get in there using a separate torch at the moment um, but yes there definitely needs to be some cleaning done doesn't there but the, the the flaps are free so that's a good sign so i've got to pull this apart now uh, so that gets done over this side here you can see there's a split along here and that's where i can get in there and give it a really good clean and clean those swell flaps individually as well and hey presto uh, let's get that off there oh, oh, oh. oh isn't that delish check out the corner here look at the carbon build up in that eh? 
So that's just, that's feral. That's disgusting. So that's going to certainly obstruct a lot of uh, airflow coming in, even where the upper section goes in there. A lot of blockage, a lot of carbon and stuff. Yuck, that's disgusting. So um, I'm going to give it a quick scrape over, then chuck it in the ultrasonic cleaner to see it do its stuff. You can hear the ultrasonic cleaner in the background, but at the moment I'm cleaning up this section here. And I've done nothing more than just drag the screwdriver quickly over this area and check out the amount of carbon that's in there. That's disgusting. Look at it. That is atrocious. That would normally sit there, uh, block up a lot of the intake flow. And of course, if it comes off, it goes through the engine, causing scoring and other issues, blockages of injectors, the list goes on and on. Now I've got to attack the bottom half. Oh, <laughs> yay. So this is the ultrasonic cleaner that I've been cleaning the uh, top section of the inlet manifold in. You can do quite a few different settings. I've got 68 degrees here at the moment, but I was aiming for 70. It's got a heater inside, you can turn it up and down. And it has a time period, I've just stopped it for now. Um, uh, I had, had it set at about 30 minutes there, so you hit the on button. And she makes that sound that really affects some people's brains. Doesn't particularly bother me, maybe I don't have much of a brain. But it, that's what it's been doing for 30 odd minutes. And hopefully it'll clean the majority of that mess out. While it's not absolutely perfect, I've been hard at work cleaning the upper section of this inlet manifold and I'm fairly happy with the results. Um, yes, it's not absolutely perfect, but I'll tell you what, we've got rid of a lot of that carbon, haven't we? Okay, just, uh, you know, you've got a few, a few little bits and pieces in the background there, but uh, not too bad at all, okay? Um, let's have a look up the front here. Front looks schmickoid, mate. Looks pretty good. Now, what I did was use the ultrasonic cleaner as I showed you. But I also used some upper engine cleaner, and that's a genuine Subaru product. Um, some people might use oven cleaner or something along those lines. I also used these little tiny brushes that you can buy in a pack of three off of oh no, AliExpress or somewhere like that. And they're that cheap that you just scrub, scrub, scrub. When it's had it, you throw it away and you put in another one and you go for it, okay? So they're not too bad. They get a fair distance inside there from either side. I probably won't be so lucky with the bottom section of the inlet manifold. But hey, I'm happy with that result for now. Now to try and combat this continual buildup of carbon, I've advised the customer to fit a catch can. And in this case, I'm going to be fitting a Western filter catch can. They seem to have a reasonable reputation. They even give you an installation guide to make the job easier. So hopefully we end up with, you know, not much build up of carbon, I'm sure we will. But uh, for this particular vehicle, hopefully the catch can will help. And of course, regular maintenance with the correct oil and an intake spray system designed for regular maintenance on these to try and help alleviate this carbon build up. And here's the cover plate that goes on the lower section of the inlet manifold. Very confusing, three separate bits and pieces. As you can see, she's pretty schmickoid, tiny bits of carbon here and there but I couldn't be bothered with those. We're concerned about big chunks. Those fellas are almost stains in the metal. Quite difficult to get to with the little brushes uh, because of their location. Some people might bead blast these. Some people might use uh, walnut blast, which is actually quite good. I won't be doing anything inside the head, like in behind the valves or anything like that. I'll do that with the intake cleaner spray system that I'll be getting shortly. Okay, I wanted to show you guys what the ultrasonic cleaner does. Now remember, I just gave it a quick scratch over with a screwdriver, and the rest here is the ultrasonic cleaner. Admittedly, I've still got a bit to go, but hey, <laughs> that saved me a lot of work, hasn't it? Um, oh, fogging up there, guys. Um, at the moment, we're looking at, what, 77 degrees, I think, according to the play school clock there. And... Um, yeah, I've done it for 30 minutes. I don't think I'll do it anymore because uh, it's actually quite good. So now it's time to get that Subaru cleaner in there and give it a good scrub. Uh, but I think we're on a winner and hopefully we can get it together, put it back on the vehicle and give it back to the customer. And now to complete the set, this is the main body of the inlet manifold with the swirl flaps attached. You can see that they're pretty clean compared to what they were before hay. Um, Look, yeah, I'm not going to lie and say they've got everything spot on, but I'm fairly happy with it. There's still some carbon staining in there, etc., but not bad overall, all things considered. Um, it looks pretty schmickoid in there, guys, so I'm happy with that. Time to reassemble the thing. I rested the manifold on these rags just to uh, clean them, give them a quick scrape. And just to give you an idea of what I pulled out, <laughs> 
in the bag there, you probably can't see it, but man, there is like a heap down there. Of course, I scraped it out with the, or the ultrasonic cleaner did a good job. That's the second time I refilled this bath and you can see how absolutely filthy it is. Of course, using that upper engine cleaner made a huge difference. Together with my little scrubbing brushes, I was able to get in there and I'm fairly happy with the results. It's all back together now. I've got to fit a catch can, but uh, hopefully I've got it sorted. Okay, no fuel leaks, it's idling okay. Of course I've got to do a road test. I also want to do a small injection quantity relearn to uh, help set the injectors back to square one without all this carbon interrupting any of the measurements within the PCM. Well, it's been a really long, tiring, dirty day. I managed to clean the intake system and get it all set up. I've also carried out a small injection quantity relearn and it's running really, really well. There's no fuel leaks, there's no problems whatsoever. It can breathe again with a clean set of lungs. I hope you got something from this video today, guys, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a like, feel free to comment down below. Of course, don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. Hey, catch up with us on Facebook as well as Instagram. So that's it for tonight, guys. We will catch you later.